the Hopi legend of the ant people and connections to the Anunnaki. This is by Alexander Light, Humans Are Free. The more you look at ancient texts and stories from around the world, you can't help but see surprising patterns. Some are so glaring that it takes real effort to ignore them, but that's what many people do. One example is from the Hopi Native American tribe and their belief in ant people, quote unquote, the Hopi of the American Southwest are sometimes referred to as the oldest people by other Native American tribes. And once you learn about the ant people, you can't help but compare them to the ancient Sumerian texts of the Anunnaki. And why? Well, let's take a simplified look, respecting the truth that only members of the Hopi tribe can fully explain. And before I go on, I want to uh, remind you of what we read a couple of uh, with videos back concerning Manly P. Hall, who had gone to visit uh, some tribes of um, North America. He spoke to some elders, and uh, when he showed them the Chaldean alphabet, one of the elders said, that's the writing of our ancestors. In other words, they used that alphabet, and some of their ancestors knew how to read it and how to speak that language. So, in other words, they had direct contact with that people and the language and the alphabet of that people. And perhaps they had taken that uh, with them because they were their ancestors. Now going back to this article, in ancient cultures there's a common thread of worshipping extraterrestrial beings from the stars who will one day return. Animals symbolic of these beliefs appear frequently in ancient art. Now remember the ancient Egyptians were uh, established by the, uh, the Atlanteans that had escaped the sinking of Atlantis and these Atlanteans had gone to other areas of the world South America, North America, uh, Egypt, Arabia, so on and so forth. Now the Hopi have re the reverence for ants similar to the way the Egyptians and Sumerians and other cultures had special reverence for cows or even the beetle and the cows may have represented our Milky Way galaxy. And in the case of ants, they describe beings from the stars known as the ant people. The picture that we're looking at is priests of the Two Horn Society uh, from Wikipedia. The photograph of two priests of the Two Horn Society sitting inside a kiva. Photographed by H.R. Voth in his book, Hoppy, The Book of the Hopi by Frank Waters, New York Penguin, 1963. Okay, so they're two horned, uh, they're two uh, horned society uh, priests. The Hopi words for the ant people or ant friends are anu sinom, anu sinom, not anunnaki, but anu sinom. Create a direct link to the stories of the Anunnaki. It could be coincidental, but it's quite striking. The Babylonian sky god was named Anu, which is the Hopi word for ant. The word Naki translates to friends. So the sky, the friends from the sky, Anunnaki actually means the friends from the sky. That's Anunnaki translates to ant friend in Hopi in both languages. They're describing extraterrestrial beings, but the Hopi say that these ant people came from under the ground. Another strikingly similar word is the Hopi word Sohu, meaning star. And the Egyptian word Sahu means star of Orion. So there you go. Look at that. Similarities everywhere. In Egyptian. Now, this constellation is seen repeatedly across the globe. Ancient astronaut theorists observe Orion and other systems such as the Pleiades appearing over and over in the layout of the pyramids and the ancient structures. And an, is that another coincidence? Now, if you see the video before this one, in, not before this one, but the one having to do with the before there was a moon. Uh, the uh, before there was a moon is very uh, something that we should uh, um, re review because it has to do with the ancient writings. And uh, before there was a moon, the Proselenius Pro of ancient Greeks, that's before Noah and Defkalion. They used to live in Arcadia, the Peloponnese of southern Greece, and uh, they uh, were around before the, the Earth had a moon. 
And uh, there are the astronomers that believe that the moon is a part of the Earth after something impacted the Earth and created the moon that flung off from a piece from the Earth. Um, but there were people inhabiting the Earth before then. So uh, what I wanted to say is that these Arcadians had their cities established and located at the uh, junctions of the star where the stars were in various constellations. Now, the uh, belt of Orion and uh, the stars of Orion and Orion's belt are the area around um, uh, where the Olympic Games used to take place in Olympia, in uh, the Peloponnese. And the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper also, all these were, all the stars were in those constellations. That's exactly where you had uh, the ancient Greeks establish their cities. Why would they do that? Why would they establish them as if uh, they were the stars on con uh, in the constellations? That's very strange, don't you think? But that's exactly how they did it. And you'll see the map in that video there. Before there was a moon, the Proselenes, ancient Greeks. Before Noah, Defkali in Arcadia. Uh, because there are a lot of legends worldwide that talk about the earth before there was a moon. Now going back to this, in the Hopi legend, these ant people were their saviors, taking them underground and teaching them how to survive to extreme, two extreme cataclysms. Once again, we see stories of a great flood like that described in the Sumerian texts in the Bible. Surviving underground with the ant people, the Hopi ancestors learned how to grow food with little water and build dwellings in the rocks. They learned about the stars and mathematics and would put those skills to use when they founded a new civilization. When it was safe to return to the surface, the ant people instructed the building of incredibly complex habitations such as that, what is seen today at Cacho Canyon. From above, they might appear like giant mount mounds, ant mounds. The structures include kivas, a hoppy word for round semi-subterranean ceremonial rooms that were entered by ladders from above. Now, according to the National Park Service of the U.S., quote, during ceremonies days today, the ritual emergence of participants from the Kiva into the plaza above represents the original emergence by Puebloan groups from the underworld into the current world. Petroglyphs depicting the ant people appear still today, and the Hopi continue to tell their story in dances and rituals. And um, there are some intriguing um, images here of this Hopi ceremony taking place inside the kivas. Um, ancient origins elaborates of the legends that one of the most intriguing Hopi legends involves the ant people who were crucial to the survival of the Hopi, not just once but twice. The so-called first world, or world age, was apparently destroyed by fire, possibly some sort of volcanism, asteroid strike, or coronal mass ejection from the sun. The second world was destroyed by ice, by an ice age, ice age glaciers, or even a pole shift. During these two global cataclysms, the virtuous members of the Hopi tribe were guided by an odd-shaped cloud during the day and a moving star at night that led them to the sky god named Sotunang, who finally took them to the ant people in Hopi. Anusino. The ant people then escorted the Hopi into subterranean caves where they found refuge and sustenance. Stories that giants and other strange beings have lived deep inside the earth are seen around the globe. In the Hopi legend, these beings were benevolent and helped the tribe even to their own detriment. Quote, in this legend, the ant people are portrayed as generous and industrious giving the Hopi food when, supply, when supplies ran out and teaching them the merits of food storage. In fact, another legend says that the reasons why the ants have such thin waists today is because they once deprived themselves of provisions in order to feed the Hopi. The thin-waisted ants, with their elongated heads and antenna, resemble some of the ancient petroglyphs. Across the globe, an African species of ant called the pharaoh ant Reminds some of a tiny version of the pharaoh Akhenaten, famous for his strange alien appearance.
In History Channel's Ancient Alien series covers this to uh, top uh, subject. In uh, episode four, um, episode nine, the in, in addition to depictions of the ant people are wall paintings to show an unmistakable similarity to cuneiform symbols from ancient Sumeria. And these symbols are associated with the wing makers according to the show. And uh, just as in ancient Egypt, there were matriarchal dynasties. DNA findings from Kachar Kanu showed a possible maternal dynasty that ruled for hundreds of years between 800 AD to 1050 AD. Scientific American published a story on this in 2017 after researchers examined the remains of 14 people found a burial crypt that ended up in at the American Museum of Natural History in New York. The Cacho Canyon settlement and thousands of Anasazi inhabitants who believed in protecting Mother Earth. However, the ancient Pueblans mysteriously disappeared along with any signs of the ant people. Today, researchers believe that climate change drove them away as the growing population could not sustain itself. The Anasazi integrated with tribes like the Hopi, Zuni, and Grand Canyon Pueblo as the modern world faces extreme changes from climate change today, the teachings of these tribes are more important than ever. Can we learn to respect the natural world and live in harmony with Mother Earth? Or are we heading for inevitable disaster like those described in the Hopi legends? Ancient astronaut theorists often speculate of extraterrestrial beings that could play a part in helping humans overcome impending future disasters. In the case of the Hopi legends, it appears that they did just uh, that. Could the ant people return from deep in the earth or from their home in the stars in our time of need? For another Hopi origin story, you could watch uh, PBS below. There's an embedded video. And this is by Harrison Kirk, guest writer, and it's on Humans Are Free and its Creative Commons. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.